That's like a cool loop that I just got from my voice that is a mixture of an improvisation and synthetic and adding some space and some depth to it and maybe that's like a nice, would be a cool foundation for a track. I think there's definitely a ritual influence when I'm thinking about my music. I'd say when I think about recorded music, I think about how important for me when I'm listening on headphones or at home that I have a really intimate experience with music, whatever that is. I have a really intimate relationship to listening when I'm at home, so when I think about like releasing a track or something or that solo listening experience, it's quite different from the live context, which I also perceive as serving a slightly different purpose. Also, I'm there and my body's there and I'm singing. It's quite different. I think my interest in ritual goes back to spending so much time in church and doing church music, combined with the implicit ritualistic nature of, of raving and that whole experience of being in a trance and losing yourself, dancing endlessly. There's something extremely spiritual and ex extremely mystical about both experiences, whether it's singing in a beautiful architecture or raving for 12 hours and really losing yourself in that communal experience and becoming so tired that your sense of identity somehow dissipates. So I first started to experiment with sort of digitally altering my voice on the computer probably six or seven years ago. It started with a lot of layering vocals, but also pitch shifting vocals, sometimes just doing one take and building chords or starting to build songs and textures just from the voice. That has progressed obviously with like different tools, different softwares, different ideas about processing. So oftentimes when I come into the studio for the first time, I'll just try to like warm up. I do a lot of recording in the studio just with a handheld mic. This is a Shure Beta 58A. I like to feel the energy from the speakers and what's coming out. So even though technically that's not the best recording, I feel like I get a lot of energy and it can help the energy in the room. I really like to start just like improvising just in front of the computer, super laid back with the monitors on. Then when I'm developing ideas, I might want to re-record something or record something in a better, different environment with a slightly better microphone, but um, I sketch a lot of ideas with this way. This is a TC Helicon Voice Live Touch 2. There's an effects box and looping station, which is up to six filter banks, and you can just record into it and loop different sections. So. Oftentimes when I come into the studio, I'll just start improvising just to warm up my body, warm up the space, and like get into a vibe. makes like a, it's a nice warm up and a way for me to get into my body and think about layering textures and layering vocals. But then also um, what I'll often do with this material is start to already process it in some way that I could use it and recombine it as like new digital material. So here, for instance, after I recorded this improvisation, I have granular delay, a Max for Live device in Ableton Live, and I just threw it on the vocal signal. And I think came up with a sort of texture that I might resample and save for later to combine into an actual track. So here I'm recording it because I'm going to save it later and like a bank of samples, things that I've made um, 
in the user library in Ableton, and I can um, go back and reference that. Maybe it combines really well with something I'm going to record in like two months or something. So that's one example of how like recorded improv works uh, whenever I like start. It might, it might be, be something, something that's more of a texture, but I could also record, improvise, like something like a single line and then treat that in a more precious way. Obviously, if I'm working in a project that has a set tempo, or I say like I have a song that's more developed and it has a set BPM, um, then I'll record in so it's tempo matched. But right now, I'm just recording sort of freeform rhythms. I'll, I'll like also make tracks that aren't totally on the grid, but are more free. And then it's really just about combining these more free samples and putting them together in ways that make sense without really thinking about a BPM. So in this case, this is something I would have done there. I use Melodyne a lot. It's a really powerful um, audio editing tool where you can adjust velocity and pitch and tuning, sort of control and warp the waveforms in a more precise way in order to get a sound that is that feels organic but also is precise in a way that feels more like electronic music. I'll often edit vocals in a really intensive way to like give it a certain shape or a certain rhythm that feels a little bit more digital. So you have to record into the software. So I have this plugin now on the vocal channel. I hit the transfer button. Hello. I'm just going to look at the last take because it was my favorite, but this is how it looks in the software. You get sort of the, the variations in pitch from like the vibrations of the voice and the approximate pitches. The thing about Melodyne is that it's, it has a quite different way of interpreting time than Ableton Live does. Playing back is not as easy as one would hope. Yeah. When I'm thinking about how I want something to sound, this is a really powerful device. You can totally take away a lot of this vibration in the voice. That's called a pitch drift and pitch center. I, I'm just gonna do some very hard edits so you can hear the difference. Using this pitch modulation effect, you can take all of the natural human vibrations and nuances almost easily. So that's quite a powerful tool to change the shape of a vocal recording. So like resample just that part. It's like I, I sort of like that sort of synthetic riff <laughs> that was happening there. So if I went over to, into the arrangement view in live. And then using lives also uh, editing in the clip view, you can also adapt the audio a lot more in conjunction with Melodyne. But what I've done now is just resampled from Melodyne, so I have everything that I did in Melodyne in a new audio clip. And I might just take this part of this. For instance, if I was gonna start to build...
that's like a cool loop that I just got from my voice that is a mixture of an improvisation and synthetic, adding some space and some depth to it, and maybe that's like a nice, would be a cool foundation for a track. Another thing that I really like to do in terms of digital processing and layering with vocals is creating uh, granular synthesis instruments out of my voice. A couple years ago, recorded a sample bank from my voice in a, in, a, in a nice, quiet studio environment where I would go from very low to very high, um, different notes um, up the scale, sort of with a certain code that I made for myself of different loudnesses, different vowels, different. So I had like all these different sounds, high and low, that I could sample from. What I usually do, I use Granulator 2 Instrument by Robert Henke. That's a free plugin if you have Max for Live and Ableton Live Suite. I start a lot of experimenting with sound in this plugin, so I might take that instrument and then, and maybe I'll just take this D2 soft. I just recorded a section of MIDI with this um, granular instrument I just made for my voice. You can also further process something like this to make it sound different in another way. I'm just gonna put a delay on this. So that already, yeah, changes the sound quite dramatically. If you're building a new software instrument or something like this, you record just anything, any little bit of MIDI. Um, you can then drag this into your user library. For instance, I have here a whole bunch of synth patches like this that I made if I drag it in here. This is how I, I mean, this is a way that I stay organized because I might make a lot of cool sounds, but they, I might not have a place for it until I've built out more of a song and thought about composition, thought about harmony, thought about like how I wanted it to go. And then it's only later that I realized that some of these might be nice to add or maybe they're not the start of a track, but they add a lot to a track later on. So like now that I saved this like this, you could, I can just take this clip and bring it over here to a new track and it saves everything, the granulator settings, all the software settings, as well as any effects that you added to the channel. So it's a really nice way to like come up with ideas, um, save them in an organized way, and then stay in the flow and use them when they might be most relevant. <laughs> Here is another one that's a bit similar. Like it's like I, I use this a lot to get sort of textures. Like this one, for instance, is a bit more complicated. There's a chord device, MIDI device, so it's playing multiple notes. There's auto panning, some like digital distortion, uh, and some delays, so it's actually quite a texture when you play it. <laughs> I often also, I'll try to like do some things that are more rhythmic as well. Like this one is just an improvisation that I recorded on my iPhone in a room three years ago and brought this in and I'm chopping it and using arpeggiators and chord devices on the slices in um, Ableton Live Simpler, which is a slice mode in Simpler to trigger different cuts of the audio to make a vocal recording that was quite organic into something that's more rhythmic. So that's a nice way to like get some more rhythmic sounds in my music, which is very, which is often very uh, uh, ambient, long vocal. And you can literally sample anything. This is a more processed digital sound 
that I'm resampling than the other one I was just doing, which was much more um, organic from the start. And there I'm like sort of using the controller as a, per as a percussion instrument more than as a keyboard because you're just triggering samples. The arpeggiator is like triggering different ones based on how many keys you're holding down. So the rhythm changes if you're holding two versus if you're holding three keys. So you can get these sort of rhythmic swings and like interplays. What I really like about this instrument that I think is cool with the different MIDI effects on it. Well, it's not just about the MIDI effects, it's also a combination of the sample that I use, which is like a regular 16th note kind of thing. That if you hold even numbered keys, it makes even numbered rhythm. And if you hold odd numbered keys, it makes an odd number rhythm. So like for instance, one note, we'll just repeat that note. But if, then if you add two, it'll give it like a, a sort of even 4-4 four, four kind of rhythm. And if you hold three keys, then different keys, it gives you this sort of tri triplet kind of polyrhythmic feel. Which, if you hold it forever, it just goes into three, but if you mix the two and the three, you can get some nice, like, polyrhythmic effects, like... It's just a side effect, sort of, of the software programming, but I find it really an interesting, really easy way to get different rhythms out of a really simple instrument. These are some different kinds of things that I do in terms of generating ideas, generating content, generating samples and different instruments to work with. And it's like building uh, compositional tools, but also like raw material that can be used in the composition process. And sometimes the tracks can stay quite experimental or electronic that I make, and I, I really enjoy that. I also try to combine these sorts of production ideas with a more traditional approach to like songwriting or composition. I think a good example of that is on my album Fountain, there's a track called Tendril, which started in a much more traditional uh, way, which was recording on my iPhone a, a melody, a sort of melody that I felt walking on the street and then feeling like, oh, that's something I could develop and then took that idea literally to a piano, like to a regular keyboard and wrote harmonies. And Tendril, this track, is based on like, for, for lack of a better word, a sort of vocal quartet, kind of like a barbershop. Like I wanted to record four voices that would be like guide the energy and sort of form the spine. And it was literally like writing chords at a piano kind of vibe. There is some quite traditional songwriting that's being combined with these more futuristic digital software processing production ideas. So here's just a snippet. <laughs> this sort of cyclical sort of um, chord progression that's like bum 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 and then um, in the next 15 seconds you can hear like the sort of progression of that idea <laughs> That's like an example of part writing at the keyboard, but then obviously it's filled out with a lot of other sounds, so I really feel like I'm sort of in between this very producer-y kind of experimental process and really trying to get to the heart of what I feel singing is about and what singing makes me feel like and writing songs. <laughs> 